Hi everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today we will look at something very different from our typical mechanisms. In this video we are going to talk about radical hydrohalogenation. This one of the few reactions that give you the anti-Markovnikov product, this makes radical hydrohalogenation an important synthetic procedure, which you'll most likely have to use in your organic chemistry final when dealing with the multi-step synthesis. So grab a cup of coffee, a notebook to work through the examples with me, hit the like button for good luck on the test, and let's get started! So first of all, let's review a little bit. What exactly is a radical? A radical is a neutral or, in other words, uncharged species bearing a single unpaired electron. And since radicals operate with the single electrons, we're also going to be using different kind of arrows to show the electron movement for those. We're going to be using so-called fish hook or half arrows. You can show the half arrows in two different ways. One, it's going to be like this, when the half arrow had inside of the curve, and the other one is going to be like that, with your half arrow head outside of the curve. They both mean exactly the same thing, so it doesn't really matter which one you are going to use. Notably, since we are going to be using the movement of each single electron, the number of arrows you are going to see in a typical radical reaction is going to be quite large. So, for instance, in the homolytic cleavage here, we'll have to use two arrows. In this case, each electron of the bond between the oxygen ends up on each corresponding oxygen. So, this electron is now on this oxygen and that other electron is on this oxygen over here. All right. So now, when we have refreshed our memory of how to operate with radicals, let's dive into the mechanism of the radical hydrohalogenation. And as with any radical reaction, we are going to start with the initiation step. Initiation step is the one that creates radicals. Before the initiation step, we did not have any radicals, now we do. And here is where the organic peroxide is going to break into two initial radicals. The most common peroxides used in the lab are the terbutoxide peroxide and benzoyl peroxide. There are the other ones as well, of course, but in my experience these two are the most commonly used ones. Sometimes you can see that some instructors and even some textbooks use the hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, which is a bit of a white lie, because H2O2 doesn't actually break into radicals just, you know, as easy as they make it seem. So for the simplicity's sake, from this point on, I'm just going to say ROOR, and if your instructor likes to use a specific peroxide, well, use that one, I guess. Next our newly formed peroxide is going to scavenge a hydrogen from an HBr molecule. This step gives us the Br radical, which will actually kickstart our propagation cycle. So now we are going to move on into the propagation cycle, and the first step of the propagation is going to be the interaction between the Br radical and the alkene. In this reaction, one electron will come from bromine, like this, and another electron will come from the pi bond to make a new bond between bromine and carbon, so these two atoms will be making a new chemical bond between them. We are also going to have another electron of the pi bond staying with one of the carbons of the double bond, so the one that is not making a bond will have an, uh, a radical sitting on it. And that gives us the product where we get the new bond between carbon and bromine, this bond over here, and we'll also see a tertiary radical in this particular case sitting on that tertiary carbon. These reactions will always give you the most stable radical. And when it comes to the radical stability, they follow the same trend as carbocations. The resonance stabilization beats the tertiary radical, which is more stable than the secondary radical, and which, in in turn is going to be more stable than the primary radical. And unlike primary carbocations, primary radicals are actually not science fiction. They do exist, you can easily form them, well, comparatively easily, uh, and they are significantly more stable than the corresponding uh, carbocations, so primary radical is okay thing to have. So next step, our organic radical is going to grab a hydrogen from another molecule of HBr floating in our system. This is going to generate the Br radical that can go back into another round of the propagation cycle, so this way we are going to create a one continuous cycle that keeps on going for as long as we have uh, fuel for that, 
And of course, we're also going to be making our final product. And like in any radical reaction, we'll also need a termination step that terminates the propagation cycle. Here, I'm only going to show one of many possible terminations. If you want to practice, I suggest you write the termination step for all possible combinations of radicals uh, in this particular reaction. Theoretically speaking, any two radicals that exist in this uh, mechanism, the BR radical, this guy, or the alkyl radical, so this guy, or even the peroxide radical, this one, all of those can interact with each other, can randomly find each other in space and recombine. And we can argue all day long which is more likely and which recombination is going to be less likely, but overall the products of the termination step will always make a negligible quantity in the final reaction mixture, so who cares? Just remember, the termination is going to kill your radicals, so grab two random radicals that you see in your mechanism, recombine them together and call it a day. So to recap, we start our initiation step uh, with the formation of our radicals. So in the initiation step, we are going to have initially radicals formed by taking our peroxide and breaking it apart. Next, the peroxide is going to react with our HBr, actually forming the Br dot, the Br radical, that is then going to go into the propagation cycle. In the propagation cycle, we first have our Br radical interact with an alkene, making alkyl radical over here. What's important to remember here is that we're always going to make a more stable radical out of two possible ones. And then our alkyl radical is going to grab a hydrogen from HBr, giving us our final product, and from that point on we're also going to have Br dot that will feed itself back into the cycle and continue with this reaction. And as I've mentioned, after that we're going to do some random termination step and call it a day. All right, let's look at a few examples. The first one is pretty straightforward. We're going to have a primary and a secondary carbons at the double bond, so to make a more stable radical we'll have to add bromine to the less substituted carbon, which is going to be a primary carbon over here, giving me the initial intermediate looking like this. And of course, we'll need to catch the hydrogen of the HBr molecule to get rid of the radical, so my final product will be the same structure, but instead of the radical, I'm going to have the implicit hydrogen. And the final product here, one bromopentane, has no chiral carbons, so we don't need to worry about the stereochemistry here. All right, moving on, I'm going to do the same analysis for my next example. We have the secondary and the tertiary carbons, so we'll end up with the hydrogen at the more substituted place, which is going to be my tertiary carbon, and bromine is going to go to the less substituted place, which is going to be my secondary position, like so. Here, however, I did end up with two chiral carbons this one and this one. And from the perspective of stereochemistry, this reaction is rather similar to reactions with carbocations, which means that the reaction is not stereospecific. This means that we are going to end up with all possible stereo configurations for our chiral atoms and our product, which in this case going to end up giving us four possible stereoisomers. For some extra practice, go ahead and draw all of them, assign the RNS stereo descriptors and determine the stereochemical relationship between them all. You should get two pairs of enantiomers and the rest of the relationship should be diastereomers. Now, my last example has two secondary carbons at the double bond. However, the left one is going to be not just secondary but also benzylic, which means that uh, if we were to put the radical onto that position, it will be stabilized by the resonance from the aromatic ring. So the bromine will have to attack the other carbon, so the other secondary position. And like in the previous case, this example is going to give me a chiral carbon right over here, so I'm going to end up with two stereoisomers for my product. In one case, the bromine will be looking at me, and in the other case, the bromine will look away from me. And of course, the stereochemical relationship in this case is going to be enantiomers. All right, to recap, remember that the radical hydrohalogenation is a radical process and uses its own special rules for the electron movement using the fish hook or half arrows. We also need a radical initiator to kickstart our reaction. 
typically we are going to use organic peroxides. We are always going to form the most stable radical in this reaction. So you should always prioritize the resonance stabilized and tertiary radicals before secondary and primary ones. Because of that, this reaction leads to the product where you are going to see the bromine attached to the less substituted atom. Or in other words, this reaction is said to give you the anti-Markovnikov product. And finally, this reaction is not stereospecific, so it leads to the formation of all possible stereoisomers, and if you are creating multiple chiral carbons, you can have quite a few of those. So be careful with this one, as some instructors require students to draw all stereoisomers if you are making several of those guys. And as we saw just a moment ago in one of the examples, we can easily make four stereoisomers in this reaction. And if you are still here, Thank you for watching this video till the very end. Please remember to like, share and subscribe and if you've learned something new today, let me know that in the comments below. Watch this video next and I will see you tomorrow.